Hello Ben here, Amateur Radio Call Sign M7FRS and welcome back to my second video featuring the new Quansheng TK11 and this is the version 5 and in this video we're going to be testing out the harmonics and power output using the tiny SA Spectrum Analyzer and the Shawcom SW33 to see what this radio is capable of. So first of all then, I've got the Shawcom SW33 plugged into the TK11 and obviously into a dummy load. Apologies for the orientation, but it's screwed in tight, so uh, that was the orientation it ended up with uh, facing that way, so we'd have to keep flipping it over, but that's not a problem. So I'm uh, on power output at the moment, so we're going to try different um, outputs. So we know that the number 6 button... Um, allows us to change between high and low power so we're going to use the top VFO uh, which I've set for 145.5 megahertz and then like I say the number six button here just changes between high low and medium power so first of all we'll try low power and um, I like say 145 500 on VFO A and that is giving us uh, 0.2 of a watt roughly or 0.25 of a watt on low power so uh, yeah very low power on on low mode uh, if we press the six button again that'll give us medium power so I've pressed it where you can see on uh, medium power there try that one and medium power has given us about 4.35 watts 4.34 something like that and then on high power Press the number six again to give us high power. Um, we're looking for, for 10 watts is what it's advertised as at. So uh, let's see if it's going to give us the full 10. No, not quite. It's given us 8.9 watts, which is not bad. Uh, it's not too far off, is it, for a little handheld on the two meter band there. So we'll try the same on uh, 70 SEMS frequency. So I'm going to uh, quickly dial in a 70 SEMS frequency. So I'm going to push the hash key which allows us to direct dial so let's go say four three three five hundred somewhere there just a generic 77 frequency and we'll do the same again let's start off on low power so low power we'll press the button it's obviously remembered the last one uh giving us about 0.47 of a watt apparently on low power uh, again same test medium power and we're getting about four and a half watts 4.59 4.6 watts something like that and then on high power same again there we go we're getting over 10 watts this time um 11 and a half watts maybe just over like 11.6 watts uh is what the uh, sw33 is reading anyway so uh uh, yeah, that's not too bad for uh, 2 metres and 70 sems. Um, this is supposed to work on 6 metres as well, and uh, also 27 megahertz. So let's try a 6 metre frequency. So let's put in 0, uh, 0.5140. So there you go, that's... Uh, uh, what is that done four seven five other oh, steps obviously probably not quite right but uh, that's given us a frequency in the uh, six meter band and then on the six meter band it claims to do up to five watts so uh, again we'll start again at low power see what it gives us and let's turn the power off and back on again because uh, it wasn't really anything it might not give us anything on low power uh, yeah, it claims to be transmitting. It looks like it is, but it's not doing anything on low power. So let's try medium. Could just be it's not even reading it. So so low power. Uh, yeah, medium power, not showing us anything either. And then high power. Uh, well, according to the SW33 on high power, it's only given us one watt. Uh, it's down tight. So uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure if it's uh, if it's reading all that well on, on high power, but... Um, or if the radio is even putting much out and again we'll have a look using the tiny sa that might give us a slightly better idea but let's just try 27 megahertz next so i've put a 27 megahertz frequency in and let's see if that transmits anything on there 
Uh, it's on high power and it's not showing on the SW33 that it's actually putting out anything at all. But again, we'll have a look using the um, the Tiny SA and see if it is doing anything on, on 27 megahertz. Okay, so thinking about it, the reason we're probably not getting any uh, output showing on 6 meters or on 27 megahertz on the SW33 is probably because the frequency range of the Shawcom SW33 is actually only 125 megahertz to 525 so i guess that's probably why we're not getting any output uh showing up but um i'll say let's put it on the tiny sa and uh see what that says okay so we've got the tiny sa spectrum analyzer connected up via the 40 db attenuator into the tk11 so let's just set the uh Spectrum analyzer up and uh, again previous videos you've probably seen me doing this. I'm going to tap the screen and um, We're gonna measure a harmonic and we want to measure the harmonic on 27.5 megahertz and we need to set the level of attenuation so we've got um minus 40 dbs hang on i pressed the wrong thing there back back uh sorry it's not attenuation it's the external gain we've got to measure so minus 40 dbs of external gain and then we're going to draw a line on there as well just as a, a reference point so if i go back and then we want to put display i'm going to draw a line at minus 10 dBs, just as a reference for us. So where that blue line is, is gonna be our, our reference point. And I'm gonna key up on 27.5 roughly. And the tiny SA is showing us up to, I think 137.5 megahertz at the moment. That might change depending upon what it wants to do. And uh, no, there you go. So we can see our fundamental, uh, which has got the number one on it is 36.2 decibels at the moment and the second third and fourth harmonics there are not as low as we'd like them to be but they're definitely better than we've seen on um other radios like the uh, the radtel uh, rt 860 and uh, obviously the old modified quan chains were horrendous for uh, for 27 megahertz but uh, yeah, I guess, uh, again, not a massive expert on this, but I think it would work on 27 megahertz. It claims to, but uh, those second, third and fourth harmonics definitely look like they're just above the uh, our reference point of uh, 40 dBs underneath the fundamental. So, um, yeah, it's probably not perfect, but it doesn't look it, it would work there. So there's obviously some power coming out on, on 27 megahertz. So let's try the uh, the other bands. Okay, so I've set the Tiny SA up this time for a six meter frequency. So we've done the same uh, same inputs into that. We're counting for the 40 dBs of attenuation. And uh, if we push the push to talk, uh, you can see on, on the fundamental, we've got about 30 uh, dBs and, well, 33 dBs. The second is minus 25. On the third, which is about... 102.9 megahertz we've got minus 45 and then on 154.1 is minus 46 so yeah not uh, not too bad it's not great but um it, it doesn't really count as a pass either so for this next test i've moved over to the high input on the tiny sa because uh, we're going to measure a 70 sems uh, frequency and the low input only measures uh, up to 350 megahertz, and but the high input will measure from 240 to 959 uh, megahertz. Hopefully, you can see that on the screen there. But um, yeah, we'll give it a go. I mean, it's not going to be as accurate, I don't think, on uh, on 70 sems in the high input, but we'll we'll give it a go. So we're going to transmit again. We're on high power on uh, 433500, and you can see our fundamental is. Uh, crept up there to still going up uh, I think it'll go up to about 15 dBs maybe a little bit more it's on 15.5 15 16 dBs there and then you can see the second uh, harmonic there is at minus 29 so it's okay on 70 sems by the looks of it um, 
But uh, yeah, make of that what you will. Again, I'm not an expert, and like I say it's limited to the capabilities of the Tiny SA. Ideally, I need the Tiny SA Ultra uh, because it's got a, a bigger range on it, but um, can only do what we can do with the, the equipment I've currently got. So there you go. That was uh, that was it on 70 SEMs. So let's do the same for our two meter frequency. So I've set the Tiny SA for 145.5 megahertz to read the harmonic there. So let's uh, let's key up there on two meters. And to me, that looks okay. The fundamental is at 30, still creeping up there, 36, 36.4 decibels. And our number two marker is at minus 59. Point two, so for the range of the tiny SA uh, in in low input mode, it looks really good to me. That looks really clean. Now I know uh, Chris Two E Zero UKH Digital Analog Ham did a similar test with some far more sophisticated equipment. They were using a, some Marconi test equipment, which is probably uh, far better than the tiny SA, and um, his results uh, were not so good. Um, so I might try this on the high input and just see if we're getting any um, any harmonics further up the band above 350 megahertz. But to me, on the tiny SA, um, this looks okay. And this is a test I've done on uh, on previous videos. So uh, yeah, it looks good on two meters to me. But we will have to definitely check this out, um, maybe with some more sophisticated test equipment, or uh, at least uh, trying it on the high input on the on the tiny SA. So we'll try that as well. Okay, so I've got the tiny SA in high uh, input, and uh, we're now measuring from 240 megahertz up to 959 megahertz, and obviously we're we're going to put out a signal on 145500. I've set the uh, 40 dBs attenuation uh, on the tiny SA again, and look what happens when we press the button this time. Again, I'm not an expert on these, but uh, that doesn't look clean to me. Although it looked clean on the uh, on the lower part of the band under two, under under 350 megahertz um for some reason on high input it looks like there's loads going on there we've definitely got a 7.6 dbs uh signal uh where was that let's just key up again at about four three five point two megahertz uh there's another one over there probably around about what is this other big spike here one at about 700 megahertz what's that one let's bring it back to there uh yeah 725 megahertz 2.6 decibels so yeah unfortunately it doesn't look as though it's all that clean on the two meter band um which sort of concurs with what chris has said so uh, i'll put a link to chris's video in the description down below and uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll do some further testing with this with some better equipment at some point so uh so stay tuned but yeah that's just a quick uh quick look at what the uh Quansheng uh, UV, no, the Quansheng TK11 Canon can't do. So uh, thanks as always for uh, watching the video. Please hit the subscribe button, the like and the bell notification to keep up to date on uh, future videos. And I'm always interested to hear your comments. As long as it's constructive criticism, you can pop it in the comments down below. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. 7-3.